Greetings and welcome to episode 8 of the Woodwind Doubling channel. Today we're going to tackle some frequently asked questions regarding playing on cruise ships for a Woodwind Doubler. Uh, now this is largely taken from an article uh, that I wrote for Sax on the Web forum and it consisted of questions that people had sent in about uh, doing uh, woodwind doubling on ships and my answers to those. Now I've taken those and transcribed them and then I'm, I'm going to embellish the replies somewhat so hopefully it won't be just a, a cut and dried reading of what I did before. And uh, unusual to me, at least for the first time on this show, I'm actually using a script instead of, uh, instead of just winging it. So it uh, might actually be a little more structured than usual. Here we go. Question number one. Do I need to double in order to work as a saxophonist on a cruise ship? My answer is yes, with very rare exceptions. If you're working with a ship's orchestra, generally a five to nine piece band, you'll be required to play saxophone, flute, and clarinet. In larger groups, it will be alto or tenor, but in a smaller group, you may be asked to play both alto and tenor as well as flute and clarinet. Question number two. My doubling skills on flute are good, but my clarinet playing is weak. Can I play alto and let the tenor player handle the clarinet work? No. You can never predict which book the flute and clarinet parts are going to show up in. I've seen all of the flute parts in a tenor book with all the clarinet parts in the alto book. I've seen all the uh, flute in the alto and the clarinet in the tenor, and I've seen both instruments in both books. I've seen so many variations of that now. You have to be prepared for any situation. Question number three. I can read well, but I don't improvise well. Could I still do this gig? Unlikely. Improvised passages are called for on guest entertainers and arrangements and on dance arrangements, and saxophonists are quite often expected to play jazz sets in the lounges as well. I'd say if your improvisation is weak, uh, start working on it. You might be lucky enough to get into a gig where you can work on it on the job, as it were, but really you want to have a little bit of time improvising. You don't want to be learning the changes to a blues when you get on your first ship. Next question. I improvise well and play by ear, but my reading skills are weak. Can I do this gig? Certainly not the ship orchestra. Reading well is a crucial skill for this type of playing. You get one rehearsal with a guest entertainer, and the charts usually appear on your stand five minutes before the rehearsal starts. So you've got to do it right on the fly. They put the dots in the stand, you play it. Anything else is just working out timing and making sure everybody's playing together. Will I be required to do any other duties? Ship's musicians are almost always required to do crowd muster duties in the ship's muster or emergency stations. That means doing passenger drills on turnaround days and crew drills on a weekly or bi-weekly basis. On some lines, musicians have been pressed into service doing guest embarkations as well. On some lines, musicians are required to do in-port manning duties. Now, in-port manning means that a ship has to retain a certain complement of uh, crew on board to cover emergency situations even when they're in a berth. So uh, I believe it's something like 10 to 20% of the total ship's complement. Oftentimes there are people in various departments who are required to be on the ship anyways while it's in port and who don't have as much free time as, uh, as the musicians do. Uh, but there will be times when musicians are required to do that because of the place that they occupy in the emergency roster. With most lines, once you get to the airport, the line covers all of your flights and hotel stays. At the end of your contract, they are required to repatriate you to the same airport you flew out of and cover all those costs as well. What I've found, too, is that uh, there will be shuttles from, say, airport to hotel, um, but possibly another shuttle from the hotel uh, to the actual ship. Uh, in the case of uh, the, one of the English lines I worked for, they put us in a hotel near Heathrow, and then the following morning when we're getting on the ship, they take us on a shuttle all the way from Heathrow down to Southampton, which is about a two-hour ride if you're lucky in English traffic. What about medical expenses? As ship's crew, you're covered while working. So again, once you set foot on that plane, you're part of their responsibility. Uh, now, I'd be a little cautious about the actual traveling to and from. You might want to take out a little bit of extended uh, medical insurance for that. Uh, but once you're on the ship, they do have uh, ship's doctors and you're well taken care of there within uh, the limits of what they can do on a ship. What about pre-employment medicals? 
Practically every line has a requirement for a marine medical exam of some sort. Sometimes it's a standard medical like the British ENG-1 or the Transport Canada Marine Medical. With some lines, they require a standard certificate plus have their own additional tests. Generally, there is at least partial compensation paid out for these. Some vaccinations may be required too, depending on where the ship is sailing. Next question. Are there minimum or maximum ages for ship musicians? You certainly need to be 21 or older. The youngest ship musician I ever worked with was 23, and in my mind, he still had a lot to learn. As for the upper end, I think the medical requirements tend to prune away some of the older musicians. If you can pass the medical and you can do the job well, you can keep working. What about visas? Many lines will ask you to get an MCV, that's the Australian Maritime Visa, which is easy to do and doesn't cost anything. Other times you may be required to obtain particular visas for countries the ship is visiting. This can be dependent on what passport you hold. As a Canadian, I'm fairly fortunate and have never needed an additional visa for any of the ports that I've visited. Just how many places have you been to now? 56 countries or more now, and probably over 100 ports. Which horns did you take with you? On my Alto contracts, I've taken my Jupiter Artist model, model Alto in a Walt Johnson case with an Altieri case cover. This combo goes easily in the overhead bins, and I've never been prevented from taking it aboard a plane. When I take my Tenor, it's also a Jupiter Artist, and it goes into a Hiscox Tenor case. I've only flown with Hiscox twice, but again, have had no problems with it as a carry-on. My flute is a Jupiter Di Medici 1011, which travels in its stock case and bag inside my carry-on. The clarinet I've used in the last several contracts is a Ridenauer Lyric. It's the only pro-quality synthetic horn I've encountered that's also quite affordable. It goes in a Protex slimline case and also goes on my carry-on. I sometimes take my Di Medici pick as well and have actually used it in shows a couple of times. What other stuff did you bring? Backup horn? Extra mouthpieces? Reeds? Emergency repair stuff? There's no luggage allowance for backup horns, but I never go anywhere without backup mouthpieces and ligatures. I also tend to travel with a large stock of reeds, as well as viable synthetic reeds. I have legeres for saxophones and clarinet. I have a music medic repair kit that I carry with me, including a leak light. I've not really had to use much more than the screwdrivers, but the more you take, the better. It's peace of mind. One thing I will caution you about is if you do any adjusting of reeds and use a knife for that, make sure that it is packed in your check bag, not in your carry-on. Likewise, screwdrivers and other small pointy tools always put those in the carry on in the check bag not the carry on um, you may want to have a look at the reed geek it's an adjusting tool for single reeds and uh, because it doesn't have an actual cutting edge on it just uh, an edge with a burr uh, you might actually be able to get it on it just looks like a square metal bar i know i've i've heard of reports of being, people being able to take those do musicians on the ship get a locker to store their instruments nope not unless you count the lockable clothes co closet in your cabin. What I found on the last trip I was on is that there were a couple of cubby holes down near the end of the, the bunks, and we were quite easel, easily able to slide instrument cases in there and keep them stowed away and keep cabin space uh, to a maximum. Is it hard to find a place for practice? That depends on the ship. Brass players are usually jockeying for practice space as they need to maintain their chops more than we do. On my first ship, the dressing room area was frequently available for musicians to practice. On other ships, not so much. What are your quarters like? Do you get your own room or is it something on the bottom of the ship next to the boilers with bunk beds? My quarters have ranged from practically microscopic to something like a small college dorm room. The theater musicians share, although occasionally if the band has an odd number of sidemen, someone may end up with a crew member from another department, or in a rare and fortunate circumstance, in their own cabin. The musicians' cabins are usually forward, as that's where the venues tend to be. This means being near the bow thrusters, which almost inevitably wake you up as the ship is berthing in the morning. Now, in the last ship contract I did, I was actually lucky enough uh, to not only be forward, but up in a fairly high deck. Uh, the passenger deck started at deck five on this particular ship. I actually had a cabin that was on deck seven above the passenger decks. Uh, didn't have a porthole, but still it meant that I could go up one flight of stairs and be at the promenade deck level. So it was a little more convenient. Are there any married couples working on ships? I've encountered a few, usually they're in departments other than entertainment. The last contract I did, there was a couple in the casino. The length of the contract rotations can differ from one department to another, so it's not something you can always count on. 
there have also been in entertainment part department on some ships been couples that actually work um, both as entertainment hosts and if they're lucky they'll get put on the same ship but that's not always the case what about alcohol policies for crew members the ships I've worked on in the UK have a limit of 0.08% blood alcohol off duty and 0.05% on duty for blood alcohol readings and you can be breathalyzed by the medical officer or security officer. On the American line I worked on it was 0.04% at any time. Alcohol prices for crew in the crew bar or officer's wardroom tend to be quite inexpensive. Crew members with deck privileges, which is the musicians on most lines, can often drink in the public bars as well, and normally have a generous discount over passenger rates. Some rooms may be off limits for crew, and there's normally a cap on the number of crew that can congregate together in public areas. As for alcohol in your own cabin, this seems to vary quite a bit. American li lines are typically quite restrictive. I was only allowed one 750 ml bottle of wine in my cabin at a time on that ship. On the UK ships, there's not really a limit. I've had dozens of bottles of red wine in my cabin all at once. UK ships tend to be more liberal in terms of having hard liquor in the cabin as well. Most American ships don't allow it at all. So Merlin, what are your least and most favorite parts of the cruise musician life? Well, my favorite part is the cool places I've gotten to go to. I doubt I ever would have made it to even half of the countries I've been to without being on a ship. Least favorite things? I've played some really, really badly written shows, the kind that practically drive you to drink. Crew drills and training when we're in ports I really want to see has been quite a drag. Uh, I missed out on some great stuff because of that. And uh, the other thing is that if there's any norovirus uh, outbreaks on a ship, you can be restricted to crew areas and not able to go into the public areas, which oftentimes means you're stuck down uh, with no sunlight for a few days at a time. So there you have it. That's in my quick uh, frequently asked questions for cruise musicians. Uh, certainly we can do another episode or talk about uh, the specifics of what skills you should have, what equipment you want, might want to take and how you can pack for things like that, and also how to jump through the hoops. You will maybe even talk about how to do auditions for an agency that would place you with a cruise line or possibly talking to cruise lines directly. Uh, it's a bit of a new adventure for me right now, re-cruising, as I'm working on my uh, solo uh, multi-instrumentalist show and uh, that we, we might even do that as a topic as well to show you what goes uh, goes behind the scenes on putting together a show like this should you be interested in doing something with the cruise lines till next time happy doubling thanks and oh and please subscribe please subscribe